my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 205 in the series of basic math. Today we'll have our fifth video in a series of 15 on the topic of Venn diagram. Today's video is the continuation of what we did yesterday, what we learned yesterday. Yesterday we discussed two notions, the notions of double counting and triple counting. Counting something twice and, end up and, 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 and ending up counting something three times. The problems from yesterday are already on the blackboard. I'm going to quickly go over them and then we'll start a new problem. Yesterday, in, 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 in the scenario of double counting, we had an example where we had tens. By the way, if you have not watched yesterday's video, day number uh, fourth one in the series of 15, day number 204, it is vital, it is crucial, it is absolutely essential that you watch this seri series in, in this, uh, these videos in its proper series, in, the, in its proper order. Otherwise, it becomes more difficult for you to follow the things. So I take it for granted that you have watched yesterday's videos and you understand thoroughly, completely, uh, the, uh, the the concepts of double counting and triple counting. I'm just right now doing a quick revision. Do you understand? So we had 10 students. Six of them we were told to study French. Eight of them study French. German we were told. When we added them up, we got 14. But we know that we only have 10 people. We do not have 14 people. We only have 10 people. That that 14 minus uh, 14 minus the 10, the number of people that we have, that overflow of 4, whatever we see here, that overflow of 4 tells us that 4 people must have been double counted. Four people must have been double counted. It's very simple. That four, you put it in the common area here. We have six people studying French, eight people studying German. As soon as we put a four here, six becomes two and eight becomes four. So we have two people who study only French, four people who study only German, and four people who study both. That's why, they are double, that's why we have an overflow of four. And now four plus four plus two, we get eight, ten people. Very simple, very straightforward. Triple counting is a little bit tricky. So we had seven students here. Out of those seven students, two of us told us that they studied uh, French, three of them told us they studied German, four of them told us they studied Spanish. When you add up these figures, we get nine. But we know that the actual number of people we have in the group is only seven. We have an overflow of two. Here we have an overflow of four. The difference is that here, in the notion of double counting, whatever you see here, you just transfer in the common area, you're done. Here you have to do a little bit of thinking. We have an overflow of 2. Why do we have an overflow of 2? We have an overflow of 2. We have 2 extra because we had one person, we had one person whom we are counting as 3 people. 1, 2, 3. We are, we are counting this one person. We are triple counting this one person. We are, counting this, we are triple counting this one person. We are counting him as 3 people. 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, that one person, since it appears as 3 people, we have an overflow of 2. That 2 tells us, this 2 tells us that we must have triple counted one person. In other words, there must there must have been one person who studies all three languages. And as soon as we put a one here, you have to go back and adjust these figures. Two becomes one, this three becomes two, and this four becomes three. And now we have one person who studies only French. We have two people who study only German. We have three people who study only Spanish. One person who studies all three languages. And now if we add up the figures, one plus two is three, three plus three is six, and six plus one is seven. That's exactly what we have here. Let's do today's problem. Today's problem, of course, also has to do with triple counting. And here's, here's the problem. We have 10 students, we are told. We have 10 students, we are told. Four of them study French. Five of them, are, five of them study German. And six study Spanish. We are also told, this is a little bit more complicated, we are also told that exactly, exactly three are enrolled in two courses, two courses being out of these three. Exactly three are enrolled in two courses. Question is, how many, how many in all three? So if you see something like this in the exam, whether you're preparing for SAT or SAT or T's or SGMAT or GRE, if you see something like this, well T's you don't worry about it, T's you don't have to worry about it because you're not going to come across 
the notion of Venn diagram on T's, but if you're studying for SAT, SAT, GMAT, or GRE, if you see a problem like this, problem of this nature will appear as an easy or a medium question. Easy or a medium question. Something like this will, will fall in the category of a hard question, regardless of which exam you're preparing for. Exactly three people are enrolled in two courses. Let's, let's build our Venn diagram. As we build the Venn diagram, we'll see what, what's going on here. So first of all, I, sh I should have I should have not done all this work here because I left no room. Let's, let's stick it here. So 6, 6 plus 4, 6 plus 4 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. We have 15. When we add up these figures, I'm going to continue this here, it adds, adds up to 15. It adds up to 15. We know, we are told, the three are three are enrolled in two courses. What does it mean three are enrolled in two courses? That means three people are counted twice. Three people are double counted. They're counted once as, as a student of one language and the same three people are counted again as a student of another language because these three people study two languages. Three people are double counted. So we subtract three from it because they're double counted. We counted three people as six so we have to take away three. Do you understand the logic behind it? We take away 3 because 3 are counted as 6. We counted 3 people as 6, so we have to subtract 3 to account for it. Once we subtract 3, we end up with 12. Still, we have an overflow. We have an overflow because the actual number of people we have is 10. Actual number of people, this 10 here, this 10 here is the actual number of people. We have an overflow of 2. What does the 2 tell us? What does that 2 tell us? That 2 tells us that 2 tells us that one person, one person was counted as three. We are triple counting one person. Because we are counting one person as three people, we have an overflow of two. That's why we have an overflow of two, because we should have counted him as, as one person, but we counted him as one person who studies French, and we counted the same exact person again as one person who studies German, and we counted one more time for the third time the same person as a person who studies Spanish. We counted him three times. He's being triple counted. He's being triple counted, which is why we have an overflow of two. That's it. We're done. We answered the question. The question was, how many are enrolled in all three? The answer is, one person must have been enrolled in all three. That, that too tells us there must have been one person who is enrolled in all three. Now we're going to draw the Venn diagram and show our work, even though Venn diagram is not necessary here, because we, that's it. We answered the question. But just, just for the sake of learning the Venn diagram, let's put it together here. So here is, I'm going to draw them very, here is the French, here is German, and here is Spanish. Okay, let's, let's get going. We have 4, 5, and 6, that's very easy. 4, 5, and 6, that's the starting point. 4, 5, and 6. 4, 5, and 6. Okay, keep, pay very close attention, please. The next part we're going to do is, is we have to pay attention. 3, we are told, in enrolled in exactly two courses. Now, it's up to us where we put these three people. We can, we can pretend that three people who are enrolled in two courses, listen very carefully, we can pretend that three people who are enrolled in these two courses are the three people who study French and German and put a three here. So that's one possibility. Or we could put, or we can pretend that these three people who are studying, who are studying two languages, we can put it here and pretend that these three people study German and Spanish. They are studying two languages, in which case three would appear here. Or we can put the three here and pretend that these three people who are studying two languages study French and Spanish. All of these scenarios are possible because three is less than four, five, and six. Of course, what we put here cannot be less than this number or that number. Do you understand? If this happened to be two, then we cannot have two people studying French and three people studying both French and Spanish. Wouldn't make any sense. But it will fine. Or if you like, we can put, or we can pretend that one person is studying French and German and one person is studying German and Spanish, and one person is studying French and German, uh, French and Spanish. This would work fine too. Or, if you want, we can put one here and two here, or two here and one here, or two here and one here. There are many, many, many different possibilities. You just have to pick one and just put anywhere. Just take a number anywhere. It really makes no difference. It's not going to make any difference at all. It really is not going to make any difference at all. I'm just going to stick a number someplace. How about we just put it here top? Let's pretend Let's, let's pretend that people who are studying exactly two languages are the people who study French and German and be done with it. 
as soon, as soon as you put a 3 there, as soon as you put a 3 here, you have to go back and adjust these two figures. You have to subtract 3 from the 5, it becomes 2. You have to subtract 3 from the one, three from the 4, it becomes 1. Are you still with me? So we're done with the part of double counting. We're done with the notion of double counting. Now you have to worry about the fact that one person is being triple counted. Are you still with me? One person is being triple counted. Let's, let's put him in here. Triple counted means he appears in the common area here. He appears in the common area. He's taking all three languages. He's taking all three languages. As soon as we put him there, we have to go back and adjust our figure one more time. We have to subtract one. We have to subtract one from this one. It becomes zero. We have to subtract one from this two. It becomes one. And we have to subtract one from this six and it becomes five. The scenarios that we have presented here, this is only one possible scenario of several different scenarios that are possible. The scenarios that we have presented here is that nobody Nobody studies French alone. There is no person out of these 10 people who study only French and nothing else. We have three people who study French and German. We have five people who study only Spanish. We have one person who studies only French, or only German rather. And we have one person who studies all three languages. And now the things will add up just fine. You will see that now the number of people that we have, the actual number of people that we have, is the actual number, is the number that will appear here. Let's find out, shall we? We have a 5 here. 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And 7 plus 3 is 10. Voila. We have 10 people exactly. You see that? That's all there is. That's all it is. This is exactly what we did yesterday, except in a yesterday scenario, it was a simpler scenario because we did not have a complication of people taking two classes. We only, here, we had we had scenario where there was one person taking all three languages, but we had nobody taking two languages. So that was a simple scenario to ana analyze. This is a little bit more complicated because here we have a double counting to contend with, and then we have a triple counting, triple counting to contend with. Do you understand? That was it. We're going to continue this concept of triple counting, and tomorrow, on day number six, two hundred and six, we're going to do a problem, which is going to be. A little bit more complicated, it will no longer be a babyish version of it, it will be a full-blown, a full-fledged version that you're likely to see as a, towards the very end of any of these exams that you're preparing for SCT, SAT or GRE or GMAT. It will, if it does appear, it will appear as a very hard question. We'll do that tomorrow and then day after tomorrow we'll do the same exact problem algebraically. Instead of doing it with the Venn diagram, we'll learn how to tackle this problem with algebra. Alright? Why not?